Welcome everyone to the Influencer Sales Accelerator Boosting Sales Strategic Partnerships event. Today, we're honored to have Tomer Hen, the CEO of Massive Influence, share his invaluable insights on how to effectively cultivate and leverage influencer relationships to drive sales growth. This event aims to empower businesses at any stage from budding startups to establish nine-figure brands with the practical knowledge and tools needed to succeed in today's digitally driven landscape. Before I turn it over to Tomer, I'd like to quickly introduce Replo. Replo is a visual web development platform that allows teams to create high performance landing pages on Shopify without the need for developers. Replo is light years ahead of other page builders when it comes to customization and page speed. We have a library of hundreds of proven landing page templates that anyone can use, as well as certified experts who can help build custom pages in just a few days. We'd like to extend our gratitude to Tomer for hosting this event and sharing his expertise. And so without further ado, let's dive into the world of influencer marketing. It's all you, Tomer. Thank you so much, Austin. Great to be here. Thanks for everybody. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited to, to talk with you guys. We've been working with Replo for a while, um, building some funnels for, for some of the brands that we work with and for our own brands that we own. So definitely super excited to support the community and provide all the insight that I can get that I can provide you with. So um, I know we have Bobby here on the line too. And I would like to, you know, before I get started, I always like to ask one of the attendees on, on their business, um, what have they done so far with influencer marketing, some of their goals with influencer relationships or marketing and anything that they feel like they need to solve or get in order to move forward faster towards their goals. So um, Bobby, if you'd like to share and introduce your business, uh, that'll be great. And then if you can just share words on your work with influencers for, so far, and what would you be hoping to get out of this training? Yeah, no doubt. So I'm Bobby, I'm with a company called Aloha. We make plant-based protein products. And we're an omnichannel company. We're in retail, third-party marketplaces, and of course our own our own e-commerce website as well. And with that, um, we're scaling quickly. It's been a lot of fun. We've kind of delved into influencers somewhat in a very basic manner, I would say, where we are kind of reaching out manually or through um, some partner uh, platforms that we use and sourcing them, having them do campaigns for us, whether it is a retail-focused campaign or a D2C focused campaign, and um, you know, assuming through their networks and some basic whitelisting and sparking and all of that, that we feel like there's success. Definitely nice for adding some noise and um, awareness for the company overall, but not something we've gone into like heavily right now. And so really like us as a business for influencers and what I'm hoping to do. So thanks for being here today too. Um, you know, things around like scalability, like what is the best way to like if we started at point, point A, how do we get from point A to point B and really scale this thing up? Um, in, efficient, in, in an efficient manner. And of course, everything that goes along with that attribution, best way to source influencers without all the manual back and forth, you know, things like that. Right. Okay, perfect. Uh, I love that. And I would love to help with, um, I think you'll get some actionable steps that you can implement with your team or whoever you work with to really scale your influencer relationships. I think that just before we dive into the training, I've noticed this with this is how basically I started with this journey of helping other brands with influence relationships. But I see this over and over that brands are experiencing great results with influencers, but most of them are very random and they're either inbound. They are either just influencers who volunteer to post about them. And then suddenly this any growth, or they've done some of the work of reaching out to influencers and when they created those relationships, it worked really well, but their problem was that it was not scalable. And it always bugged me that the fact that there is such an effective marketing channel in a world where, you know, ad prices are just going um, higher and higher. Um, you need to create more creatives. You always need to come up with new angles for your ads. And authenticity is something that just performs and outperforms and everything else. So, but still, you are aware of this channel, you had this experience, but for some reason you're not able to double and triple down on what's working for you. And this is what I try to solve for my brand, Switch Supplements. And this is the journey that I was on uh, helping other brands. So um, I really resonate with, with what you shared. And I think many other brand founders are experiencing the same. 
And I hope that by the end of this training, you'll have actionable tools and things that you can use to amplify your influencer, your growth with influencers. So um, let me let me share my screen. Um, all right, right. Okay. Cool. So uh, welcome to grow your brand with influencer relationship. Um, I'm going to present a five-step formula to acquire more customers, increase your brand value and triple your ROAS, which is something that we are seeing with many brands that, um, with, that use the same, the same strategy. Oh, okay. So I'm Tomer. This is my dog Milo and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Switch Supplements, which is a supplement brand made for entrepreneurs. And I been also I'm also responsible for the marketing and customer acquisition in capital the capitalism fund, which is a, an e-commerce fund that invests and grows e-commerce brands. I'm the founder of Modco. We've been doing this for the last eleven years, working with big brands um, like Amazon, McDonald's, L'Oreal, Audible, etc. But my true passion my true passion is working with. Um, individual founders who have founded their own business, started their own business, and then they really want to grow it. So it is way more satisfying than working with those Fortune 500 brands. And I kind of deviated into that in the last uh, three years. Um, now, I do want to talk about uh, just briefly on why am I doing what I'm doing and how did I get here? So when I wanted to launch my first brand, I knew that influencers are a really effective way to increase your um, customer acquisition, your profits, and just get some brand recognition when you're just starting out. I know that I do items, and I guess that most of you did the same um, after seeing someone recommended, recommending a product or a service, it could be a friend, it could be an influencer. And like, I really want, I really wish that someone would say the same thing about my brand because I know that if they'll try it, we know that this is a good product, and we know that if they like it and someone hears about it, they will try it and they like it and they become a customer. So I started doing what many brands are doing nowadays, which is um, just out to influencers and paying them whatever they, they requested. So I spend just above $50,000 on podcast promotions and sponsorships and shout outs, et cetera. And I could tell you that the ROI that we were getting was so low. It was single digit ROI. So, but I knew that I knew that there are still so many brands who are growing with influencer relationships. So we had to figure out a way to do this right. So I started talking to many eight figure and nine figure brand founders, um, many advisors and consultants, hired them. Most of them are getting paid, you know, four figures an hour. But I just realized I have to understand how they are doing it without paying these huge, these huge amounts of money. And we know again that the truth is that 84% over 80% of online shoppers say they, are, they were influenced to make a purchase. But in reality, brands are losing money when it comes to influencer relationships. So we had to find a way to make this right. And fast forward, we realized this five-step formula that we put together after trying so many other strategies and tactics and suddenly we start seeing the results. Suddenly we start seeing that we are able to create real deep relationships with influencers. And these are the ones that allowed us to scale our brand. The problem was that it was really unscalable. It was time consuming. We had to invest um, you know, in personalizing every message, every outreach, following up so many times, but the benefit was that we've built real relationships that we were proudly saying that None of them was sponsored. None of them promoted us because we paid them. All of them, or even asked them, all of them were posting and telling about our brand to their audience uh, because they really liked our product and because they loved our relationships. So we had to find a way to scale that up that more than five or 10 influencers. And this, this is how we came up with this structure uh, because we realized if we could hire a VA, an intern, just hand it over to someone on our team, it doesn't have to be um, with me and my internal team, and we could really scale that up very efficiently. So uh, you'll have all the slides uh, later. You can, you'll be able to download the slides, but just some of the results that 
you can expect by implementing this framework. Um, we are seeing this over and over with brands who just got started in a program that we are helping. So um, I, I, I put some, some of these so you get some encouragement because I know that many brands get burned out with um, all this noise that is out there about how you should approach influencers. And I think it's very encouraging to see other brands who are doing pretty well with other strategies. So let's talk about the opportunity and why influencers is a great opportunity for DTC brands. So we know that the ad creative, especially you know, nowadays, are the number one factor to make or break your ad campaign, right? It's not hacking the algorithm, it's not a targeting, it's not any of that. It's really the ad creatives. Of course, there are other factors as well, but the ad creative is the number one factor. Now, the problem is that ad fatigue hits way quicker than our ability to generate new ones, and it costs a lot of money. We need to come up with new angles. We need to come up with new creatives. It either costs money or we're just not able to keep it up when we have so many other things to do. Um, the other problem is that limited by the number of uh, brains that are responsible to create those creatives. So even if you work with the best creative director or creative strategist, or even five content creators that you hired, you're only limited to their minds. And nowadays you really have to come up with very engaging and uh, different creatives or different angles every week if you want to, if you really want to scale your brand to eight and nine figures. So the opportunity is that influencers and relationships with influencers can generate you hundreds of unique UGCs every month. And if you will follow this strategy, you will be able to get all of that content for virtually free. And of course, you'll have to send them the product, but you will never have to pay them in order to get the content from them. So we'll talk about how to do this right. Now, the outcome is that you will get most profitable ad creatives. We all know that authentic, unique uh, content that is not so polished, that is not scripted, that people can sense out of a video whether, it's, whether an influencer likes your product or likes your money. And what you want to have as a brand is influencers who are vouching for you in a very authentic way. So the outcome would be that you're getting your most profitable ad creatives that are based on influencer, really, uh, influencer generated content. You also get you know, targeted influencers who are promoting your brand for commission only or even free. And we'll talk about it as well. Um, and of course, social proof. Social proof that you can leverage everywhere. If you can have your Instagram page filled with dozens of influencers who are just vouching authentically for your brand. Um, this has a huge impact on the buying decisions of your customers. When they check out your Instagram page and they only see content that is coming through or your ad studio or a very polished scripted video by a creator, they don't believe you. But when they see dozens of influencers who are vouching for you, this is where like, oh, this stuff is, is actually legit. And it's super relevant. It was super relevant for our brand in the supplement space where customers are very suspicious. They will not just spend money on a product they don't believe in, but they are mostly not put it on or in their body. So social proof was something that it was very hard for us to create when we didn't have many customers, but it was very easy for us to generate when we intentionally reach reaching out to influencers who are just our potential customers just with a big audience. Now, let's talk about some top mistakes that brand founders are making. So I wouldn't go too much into the, the value of you know, uh, why influencers are important. I think that I covered this uh, enough and mo most brands know what is the value of influencer relationship. It's just that their approach to it times is a bit misled by all of the noise that is out there on the internet. So I think the number one mistake that I see brands making is that they negotiate before they date. And our number one rule of thumb in our team is we do not negotiate with influencers. We are not offering them to get a free product in exchange for a post. We are not, um, we are not negotiating prices with them when we are just start, when we just start dating, but we will always lead with value. We will never ask them for anything. We'll talk about it soon. And that comes back to my second point, which is many brands are trying to extract access to the influencer's audience and content that they will create for you way too early in the process. And we have to realize that there are 
are many brands that are reaching out to to the good influencers that you actually want to work with. And if they're getting 50 or 100 messages every day from brands, they can sense that you're trying to extract something from them. And I will share with you soon how you can turn these, these mistakes that brands are making. And if you do this right, you can really stand out from your competition on the influencers, um, on influencers' attention. The other uh, uh, mistake that I want to share is that they're making it a pure numbers game. And what do I mean by that? We know that, I, I would say that this is definitely a game rather than a quantity game. But in order to get the quality, you need the quantity. The thing is that many brands are doing either of them. They think that they can only, they only need to reach out to the top 10 influencers that they will promote them. And usually that just doesn't work because it is a numbers game. And the other, the other end of it is that brands are thinking that if they only reach out to 100 influencers a day, um, some of them will agree, some of them will, will get some results. So if we just play this numbers game, it's free to reach out, almost free to reach out, except your time, um, we'll get the results that we're looking for. But it just doesn't work. If you don't add personalization, if you don't make it a quality game and a numbers game, um, you would probably not get the attention that you're looking for. You can get some results, but probably not the ones that you'd expect that will be worthwhile to continue with this. So our strategy is that we always engage with and create non-transactional relationships. I don't like the term influencer marketing. I just think that it's a disservice to the opportunity that lies there with building relationships with influencers. And we always build non-transactional relationships. We start with non-transactional relationships that might turn into a paid collaboration later on. We'll talk about it, but we start with value, long-term relationship, and just giving out more value as a brand. We'll talk about it soon as well. Um, we always have the give and hold the ask kind of strategy where we lead with value. We show them that we are we really want to maintain this relationship. We really want to keep that relationship. We're not expecting for anything in return. And just like any other relationship in life, when you come with that expectation, usually you are getting what you intended to get. Um, so again, the quality and the quantity game, we kind of um, uh, went through. And this is, I think that this is super important. Um, many brands try to tie their hopes into getting a huge amount of sales after an influencer posted about them. When in reality, most of the traffic and uh, the inventory that is going out there in different platforms like Instagram, TikTok, Facebook um, is paid traffic. So if you really wanna get access to the influencer's audience, if you really wanna get access to those platforms audience, you have to supplement those gifts and those influencer posts with ads. So the thing is that you can get nice number of sales out of organically with an influencer post, but this is not predictable. You cannot predict how many you will get. And most of the time we, we hit, we miss our target. Like we think that we'll get way more or we think they will get way less. And then we see all these surprises, which is cool, but it's not predictable. And if we want to grow consistently, we need to have some predictable channel or some predictable way to um, know how much we can grow to and um, how we are getting to our goal. So. The, the way we do this is by um, focusing on promoting the content that we're getting from influencers on our ad campaigns. So we really care about them posting about us organically and it has some compound value of social proof and people seeing us everywhere. But the true value is when you can take that content, even if it's received a very low number of organic uh, views and supplement it with on your paid campaign and then tapping into hundreds of thousands or millions of, of views um, into this content that could perform really, really well. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, there are some results that you can see here, some of the videos that we are getting constantly, you, you will have it in the presentation, so I won't spend too much time on this. Um, the five-step framework that we follow is as follows. Step one is we research for the influencers. Step two, outreach. Step three is give and we lead with value. Step four is we promote the content that we're receiving from influencers. And step five is the scale. And I'll go over each one of them. Before we dive into that, we want to have some preparation for the brand. And many brands don't have that 
in a platform where they start reaching out to influencers. It could be either TikTok or Instagram, but uh, it's very important that you have what I call an MVB, which is a minimum viable brand. So that means that you need to have some social social pages with some content. It doesn't have to be, you know, tens of thousands of followers. It could be just basic content. It'll show that you're a legit company, uh, preferably UGC or um, founder story or whatever. Uh, never buy likes or followers. It's better to have 500 followers than and and normal engagement rates than having 50,000 followers with two likes on every post because influencers can sense it immediately and it's it's it's, a, it's an immediate uh, no go for them. Um, the other thing is the unboxing experience. It's very important for brands, especially in categories where they are very competitive, to have a very unique exciting unboxing experience and we've learned this the hard way after sending dozens of products to influencers and received almost no feedback from them and we realize that it's just not exciting for them to share our product with their audience when they're getting so many really cool boxes and packages from other brands and when we shifted into creating a very, very exciting unboxing experience, which include handwritten notes and personalized item or an item with like a brand swag item in addition to our core product. This is where things got really exciting, got really interesting. And then many brands, uh, I'm sorry, many influencers have just started posting about us because packaging and the unboxing experience was really cool. And they also felt like a VIP, which is also super important. They're not getting uh, your product in like this brown box. They're getting it in a very special uh, with a handwritten note. They feel special. They feel like they want to give back. And this is why um, it works so well. So the research, uh, I'll go over it uh, uh, briefly. Uh, by the way, I have more videos that go into each of those steps uh, very deeply uh, with all the technical uh, uh, the technical side of things of how to find them technically on TikTok, et cetera. But I just want to give you this, this strategic advice so you can um, maybe change some of your processes currently. And if you wanna dive deeper into it, you can look for my videos on YouTube. Um, so the first step research is, uh, we start with finding two to five dream influencers you'd like to promote your brand. And my best advice, whenever someone asks me, and this is one of the most common questions that I get, like which platform are you using to find those influencers? And we have tried every possible discover, influencer discover out there. And I can tell you that nothing compares to having a manual search on Instagram and TikTok. The, those platforms are just getting, providing less and less access to those discovery platforms and they wanna keep all their data themselves. So my best advice is that you take one of those dream influencers and go into the suggested account tab on under their profile name and look for other accounts that Instagram or TikTok will recommend you to follow. And these are this is a way to get thousands of influencers just by doing the same process for all of the other influencers. And you can see how it could compound. And if you vet them manually and you have all those filters, not just the regular, you know, 2% engagement, or, you know, I know that many of you are aware, are aware of it. It's more about seeing, would I be happy if this influencer would post content about my brand? Or would that be a potential customer of mine and they would really enjoy the product? Or do they even post content that is relevant for my product, right? It might be that they're just a promotional account or they're just promoting their business. They never share anything that they use or buy or eat or drink. So it, it's just a waste of time to try and work with them, especially if you don't wanna pay them anything. So this is why the manual search um, work really well. And of course, if you have the right SOPs, the system, the processes, you can just have an intern or a VA to do that for you because it could be very daunting, but if they know what they need to be look, to, to look, um, if you have a VA getting paid three to five, ten dollars an hour, wherever they're located, um, you could really get the job done way more effective than any other platform. Um, yeah, so one other cool um, way is to use the tagged feature on your competitor's page. So if you go to one of your competitor's page and you look on the tagged photos or tagged content, you can see other influencers and customers who have posted content about them and tag them. You can just reach out to them and most chances they would be to try out your product. Um, okay, so I just wanna share with you um, like very surprising responses that you could get and you never, you, you can never know where that would come from. So uh, in, in a nutshell, this influencer 
Um, she's got a pretty big audience, uh, over a hundred thousand followers, which for a micro influencer, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of good. And it was the exact target audience that this brand that we we've, we've helped with, um, th this is the thing that they were looking for. So we reach out to her and she's like, yeah, I love the product that you sent. Um, but I only do paid promotions. So we politely said, um, we're sorry, you just, we just don't do paid promotions. And her response was super surprising. She was like, you know what? Thank you for that. I actually liked your product so much and I want to buy eight units of it to my brothers and their loved ones. So I usually charge $900 for um, a spot in my giveaway and I would love to give you that spot for free if you will be happy to send me six to eight units of your product. Their cost was maybe $10 uh, per unit. So for her, it was a big win. They, this brand got a $900 value post on their profile and they were getting just a bunch of sales directly with it. The content was great. And this, these are the type of things that happen when you lead with value because you would either way just pay this influencer $900 or she would just say, no, I, I'm not willing to help you. What many brands are doing is that they, they say, hey, would you promote me if I send you a free product? And an influencer like that would say, I'm sorry, but no, it's $900. But because we led with value and we sent a free product, then it's like, oh, I really like it. So I will be happy to collaborate with this brand in one way or another. So I just wanted to give this very specific example to know that it, it happens every day and super surprising. Uh, the second step is out. So DM or email, um, really important, appreciate their content, show them that, um, that you know their content. And I have a screenshot here. I'm not sure if you can see this on the video, but um, um, we, this influencer was so surprised with how we personalized our message based on her content. I think she said that um, she just had, she just have a new baby. So um, yeah, okay. So wishing you beautiful last pregnancy weeks. And then her response was, love actually see that you looked at our page. We get a lot of pictures that, a lot, that show that they clearly didn't even look at the page and this content, and this is super helpful. So, I mean, these are the type of things that happen when you personalize your message and you take the extra effort to uh, show them that you really care because this is what will stand out from everybody else. Now, when you, reach, when you reach out to them, offer a free product and don't ask for anything. This is super important. Even emphasize that you're not asking for anything, just want their feedback. This would go a long way. And because all, most of the brands are doing the exact opposite, this is where you're like, oh, okay, yeah. I mean, that's surprising. I thought that you wanted me to promote you. Many of them are even asking, um, hey, what are you expecting in return? And I love that response because this is your opportunity Although you will have the urge to say, yeah, we just expect you to post about us. When you say, nope, we're actually not expecting anything. Um, this is where they're like, oh, wow, this is so different. So yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to get that. And then some of them will post about you. We'll talk about it soon. Um, next, we are going into nurturing the relationships. So staying in give mode, just keep communicating with them, keep engaging them. Eventually, this is a customer that just paid zero dollar for your product some of them would really love your product and some of them would love to give back and also maintain the relationship with you because they instead of buying the products from you moving forward they are just able to flip their phone and you know spend 60 seconds on it so um when you nurture those relationships and you stay in give mode one of the things that you could do is offer them a, uh, a second product or a refill if that's a consumable product like food snacks um, hair care, skin care, whatever, supplements. Um, send them a care package that you build with other brands um, and follow up every couple of weeks, right? The more you communicate, the more chances you will have, just like customers, the more chances you will have versions. It's just like, even if they love your product and they would love to post about it, they simply forget. Uh, many of them are not even trying your product just because they get so many. It's just about staying at the top of your mind. Um, okay, now the other, the, the next step is to leverage your relationships. So first you need to ask for content usage rights. Usually they just, uh, um, they, they give it pretty easily and that shouldn't be an issue, especially if they post about you for free. Um, and then you can iterate and create different versions of the content that they created for you with better hooks, mesh up all this content together and test all of that content um, on ads, on your social profiles, on emails, all of that. Next, you can offer to 
join your ambassador program. And this is something that I always recommend to hold at least for a few weeks, but most importantly, um, to a point where you already have constant communication, you send them one or two free products, they post it about you once or twice, and then you promote you. The, I was very surprised that many influencers will just post about you. They don't really care about your commissions. They just wanted to do this because it's great content. They generally recommend the product and they want to do good to that relationship. They don't really care about getting this commission. So when you offer this ambassador program, of course, if they ask for it, just provide it to them, but um, don't lead with that. Wait and build a relationship before you offer anything that is transactional. Okay. And then um, next step is to scale, right? Um, and this is where things are getting very interesting. One of the cool hacks that we've been using with our brands and the brands that we work with is to offer every influencer that you have good relationship with to send free products to their other influencer friends that have the same, they share the same audience or share the same mission or whatever. Um, and these are your referrals to influencers. This is a triple win because you, they're getting, they're, they're, they're being seen in a good light with their friends or influencers. The influencer is getting a free product and you're getting a warm referral to other influencers. This is a cool way to double and triple the amount of influencers that you work with and have a warmer interaction with them. Next step is you can al always negotiate long-term partnerships with top performers, which means that we negotiate with influencers when we get to a stage where they are already proved that the content they've created for us actually performs on ads. So until we get to a point where they send us at least one piece of content and we tested it out on our ad campaigns, or if we see organic sales coming through their post, this is where you can reach out to them and say, hey, would you like to get $300 and send us four videos like that every month? This is, you're doing this at a stage where you know that their content performs. Instead of trying um, to shoot everywhere, and this is what most brands are doing. Like, yeah, let's pay 20 influencers, $500 and see what, what sticks. And most of the chances that it will not work, it could work, but most of the chances it's just a shot in the dark. So here you work with influencers, you build a relationships, you get the content, you see that they actually grow sale and only then you will offer a long-term partnership that is paid and more scalable and more predictable. So it's, it's just like a funnel, right? It's like a funnel where you have prospects and leads and then customers, and then you have your very loyal customers and you have your diehard fans and your brand advocates. So your goal is to get as many through the funnel, but converting them through it over and over. And what most brands are trying to do is they try to get the diehard fans when they reach out, when they're first reaching out to the influencer and they are trying to shortcut by just paying them or offering them something or asking them to post about them for free. And this is where they're just like, no, I'm not going to do it. Or the brand is losing so much money. So it, it usually just doesn't work. And this is why we had to come up with a different strategy. And this is why I really, really encourage you to try this strategy that is very different than what many other um, you know, influencer marketing gurus or videos will tell you on YouTube. So yeah, so um, I hope that it was helpful. I know um, this was uh, 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 like a bird's eye view on our strategy. And I invite you to dive deeper if you want to take this to your team or you want to um, get more knowledge on every step along the way, feel free to uh, go on my YouTube channel and look for other free resources that you can follow. Um, the action steps that you can take is either do it yourself or uh, work with me and my team on a done with you and a done for you uh, program. Uh, done with you in a nutshell is our are to build an in-house influencer and ambassador program inside your company. We hire a VA, we hire an intern that does most of the work for you and uh, you just have to track the results and then you own a system. You never have to hire an agency. You never have to hire us moving forward once we completed it. And this is a very, very cool program. Uh, the other way is just we do everything for you and we have our own in-house team do the work for you. Um, and I'll be happy to discuss this uh, if uh, you, you would be interested. Other than that, I'd love to give you some free resources. So if you go to influencerschecklist.com, you can get our influencer relationship profits checklist. So this is the checklist that 
my team follows every day and the brands that we work with follow every day, week, and on a biweekly basis, all of the action items that you need to take so you can forward it to your team or whoever you work with to just follow this checklist every day, every week, and on a biweekly basis to see the results that we just discussed. And this is free resources, just go to influencerschecklist.com. And if you want um, my help with scaling your brand with influencer relationships, I'll be happy to answer any questions. So feel free to email me at hello at tomorhand.co. Um, any questions that you have, I hope that you had a good time and that you got some value out of it. Thank you so much, Tomer. I really appreciate it. Uh, station today and thanks everyone for joining and uh, we're going to post this on YouTube in the next 24 hours here uh, and we will definitely be hosting another one of these sessions next month as well so keep an eye out for that um, and again thank you so much Tom I really appreciate it today yeah I had a great time so thank you so much same here thank you take care everyone right.